What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now normally I don't do a review or a spoiler talk of Game of Thrones because I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but not this time baby, not for the season finale. It goes without saying guys, but this episode is going to be heavy on spoilers, so if you haven't seen the season finale, don't watch this, go watch the season finale. Now, was it just me, or did this episode feel like the end of The Godfather, where all bets were being settled? And for good reason, too. If you've noticed, this episode ran an extra 15 minutes because there was so much shit that happened. So let's get right into it. So evidently, Cersei Lannister has a real hard-on with pyromancy, and damn! This lady is scary as shit. I mean, she is freaking business, man. As luck would have it, the bulk of the body count this time happened in King's Landing. Yeah, basically she wipes everybody out with the wildfire, and I think the one that got it the worst was Lancel Lannister. Jesus Christ, I mean, he got it right in the face. You know, when you really think about it, essentially Cersei succeeded where the Mad King failed. Well, to a certain extent, of course. However, not everything went as planned, as upon seeing the explosion, Cersei's son essentially decides he doesn't want to live anymore, and he ends up throwing himself off of the keep. Now at this point it's really interesting because I'm trying to wonder what was going through his mind. Was he worried that his mom was killed? Did he know about it? Or was the crown just weighing a little too heavy on him and he just decided to say fuck it? Remember that nun that was really tormenting Cersei for the past season? Yeah, shit got real for her really quick. Try to imagine being woken up, essentially being waterboarded by Cersei, except instead of water it's wine. And she's basically saying, look, I'm not going to kill you right now. And your fate is left up to the mercy of the mountain? Yeah, there's no universe in the world where that shit ends well. Hey, guess what? Now the Tyrells have something in common with the Starks, they've all essentially been wiped out. But to be fair to the situation, Mace Tyrell was a buffoon and really didn't know what he was getting into. Laris Tyrell was already gone. I think that Marjorie was the only one who really knew how dangerous Cersei was. It really sucks that the Tyrells got wiped out. I really liked them as characters and they really brought an interesting vibe to the show. I will say this though, I freaking can't stand religious fanatics, so if it meant sacrificing a bunch of Tyrells to get rid of that goddamn High Sparrow, then so be it. Just the look on his face when he realized that Cersei got the better of him was priceless. Don't get me wrong though, no offense to Jonathan Price, he was freaking amazing in this role. You know, now that I think about it, Game of Thrones was not very nice to people over the age of 60 this episode. Grandmeister Pycelles essentially got Julius Caesar off the show, and by children no less, I stopped counting how many stab wounds after about 20, 25. Jesus, and I thought millennials were a bunch of assholes. Walter Frey gave a whole new meaning to getting your fingers caught in the pie. I'm not exactly sure what's worse, finding out that you had actually eaten pieces of your sons, or getting your throat slit. Either way, it was incredibly satisfying. What? You guys are thinking the same thing I am. And how about that Arya Stark? Most girls her age are picking flowers, dreaming about boys, thinking about getting married. Not her. She's checking people off her list, man. And from what we saw from this episode, she's all done with the phrase. I mean, this episode was all about revenge and reciprocity. And speaking of revenge, the last living Tyrell, Lady Olena, is secretly meeting with the Snakes of Dorne because, man, that lady's pissed. And yes, something I've been waiting for for a long time, we finally know Jon Snow's origin, we finally find out who his parents really are, and it turns out he's not a bastard after all. Cersei's plan worked. I mean, she essentially wiped out her opposition, who the hell is left alive that would even challenge her authority, so she's essentially the queen now. And finally, we end the season finale with a triumphant mother of dragons crossing the narrows with an entire armada of soldiers. Not to mention both Greyjoys and arguably two of the greatest minds in Westeros, Varys and Tyrion Lannister. Overall, this was a fantastic season finale, and one of the things that I really liked about it was the overall tone. It was really well paced, I liked the way that they drew out a lot of the drama, and man did it create so much freaking tension, it was incredible. In terms of direction and sheer scale, it was remarkably ambitious as it really had to resolve some of the storylines of most if not all of the characters. Its execution was sheer perfection and I would say would rival any Shakespearean play. Now this is not merely supposition on my part as you can see that this season finale was heavily influenced by Titus Andronicus. Now I'm not even going to try to make predictions on this damn show because this show has balls and it'll kill off characters or do whatever the hell it wants. It's a living breathing thing. 
Alright guys, so that's my official spoiler talk on Game of Thrones Season 6 Finale. This was an amazing season and I can't wait for Season 7. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot one last thing. How about that little badass, Liana Momont? I mean, is she runner-up for freaking Motivational Speaker of the Year or what? <laughs> Alright guys, I love this freaking show. As always, I thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews.